We're doing analysis of esters. So up here is the name of the method that the machine is using. Uh, right now it says norbornene. We want that to be esters. So here I'm clicking on method and I will load method. We have maybe a hundred or so different methods here. So I'll scroll down until I get to E for esters and here's esters. I'll click that, double click, and now up here it should say esters dot M. M is for method. Before I run my sample, I'll go here to run control, sample info. Subdirectory is important. There's one main data directory, but you want your data to appear where you can find it. So here I'll just say SOGO is my subdirectory. Uh, it's important that I check this prefix counter. That will make it so my old data is never overwritten. I'll give my uh, sample a prefix. Has to be no spaces, something that I'll know what it is. So I'll just call it sal acid as my prefix. Uh, it has a random number here as a counter, but if I come and use this machine again with the same method, the same prefix, it'll count up. So the next one will be 44, 45, and that way all my old data is saved, not overwritten. A little lower on the page, I have a chance to name the sample. <coughs> so this is actually where I can be more detailed. 50-fold dilution of salicylic acid is okay. Sample amount, uh, the loop is 20 microliters, so I can put a 20 there. It's not really important. But this comment section is important. This is what will show up on your HPLC printout. So you want to make this fairly detailed. So this was uh, 0 0.1 molar. Whoop. This was 0 0.1 molar salicylic acid in uh, methanol diluted 50 fold in 50 star. <clears throat> uh, we can say the method is using the esters method. That's the uh, that's helpful. Whoop. Uh, I should also say what wavelength I'm using to uh, on the wavelength detector what wavelength I'm using so that can help me al also so I think we'll use 260 nanometers okay alright so that's good detail there and I clicked OK on the computer now I can see my UV lamp is on if it were off I would do a right click switch UV lamp on is what it would say. The other control here is for the pump. You see gradient pump? So to change this to 260 nanometers I'll do a right click and uh, choose method and up here you can see it says 270 I can change that to 260. So to do this intelligently you need to have a UV spectrum of your starting material so that we know what wavelength it absorbs at. I say OK, and now this should change to 260, which it does.